the Swiss with a great performance yesterday, winning their pool after hanging a zero on the scoreboard in Hawaii. So a nice little bounce back from them. And they will start on the king's side here with the kings from the first stop in Holland, the Spaniards, Herrera Gavira, most experienced team starting on the serving side. First serve. And we're about to kick off here. Adrian Gavira dodges that one, but it falls into the corner. Point number one on the board for Switzerland. Big bomb up the middle from Plavins after the nice dig, and he and the Lion King will take the King's side for the first time. Crafty little play there from the Lion King. The fake on two, jump set. Plavins puts it away, and they're on the scoreboard. That one just wide, the Americans, the Hawaiians. Trevor Crab, Triborn. Take the King side, Try doing double duty today as well. Did a little sideline reporting for us. Now out on the court. What a shot there, Trevor Crab, right on the buckle. Tucks it in the corner. Three ones on the board, two zeros still. For those of you just tuning in, this is men's semifinal A. It's a 20 minute round, five teams. Lowest score will drop. Final four remaining teams go to a 16 minute round with the lowest score out. And then the final three teams will play for two automatic spots in the final with the highest third place score also advancing. Marciniak and Zahn take their place on the king side. That ball falls well inside the line for the ace. And Latvia again on the king side. Sneaking into the broadcast booth now is my esteemed colleague, Marlene Van Ersel. Marlene, welcome. Thank you. Whew. Not too quick of a turnaround for you, I hope. <laughs> no, it's okay. It's okay, I'm good. Nice dig there, Lion King. Oh, that one just wide, though. <laughs> Lion King's gonna continue to point at Marco on the way through, but no touch detected. Hard to score here early, it looks like, in men's semifinal A. Team's playing some good defense. Even as we saw yesterday with the wind picking up a little bit, the contender side, the serving side, is kind of the bad side, right? It's difficult to put a ton of service pressure on the teams on the king side with the wind at your back. Exactly. It's actually the same today, so. So at least you got a chance to get used to it all day yesterday and then True, true. But yesterday was kind of swirly. Today is more consistent, so I think we should get to see some more stable volleyball. Okay. Yeah, and it, it kind of picks up as the day goes on, right? So both days you guys had the 9 a.m. round, right? Yes, exactly. So you got kind of calmer conditions. Yep. Now you would, I mean, most volleyball players are this way, but particularly you would prefer a little wind in your face because you crack your jump serve. Yeah, for sure. For serving, I love some wind. Crab and Born off to a nice little run here. They jump out to a six-point lead, a five-point lead over the next closest competitor. Yep. Nice swing again from the right side, Trevor Crab. And that's now eight on the board for the Hawaiians. They're taking the lead in this first one. Just long. A 
Herrera Guevara a little bit surprisingly still on zero. But they can get on a run in a hurry. That one. That touched the line. But. Big wave Dave up top. <laughs> Looked like he had a good look at it at least. As we've discussed in this format, no time to argue calls. There's eight seconds between whistles, and uh, so you get about a second and a half maximum to plead your case. Yeah, and the referee actually never changes a call, so. <laughs> right. There's not, not, no use anyway. There's no need to waste the fans' time nope. with an argument that's going nowhere anyways, right? <laughs> actually, maybe the normal beach volleyball game can learn from this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trevor with kind of a little needle there. It's a nice little run they're on here, and keep in mind that this is oh. the semifinal, so the longest streak bonus is in effect here. Yep. As they get to 13 now, well clear of the next closest team, which is Samoylovs and Plavins, oh. with just two. Nice little jumbo. Triborn's on fire. And the Hawaiian pronunciation, that's chowda. Chowda. <laughs> that was 12 points in a row. 12 in a row. That score may hold up as the longest streak, which would earn Trevor and Try 2500 extra dollars, which will get you a few cocktails at Duke's down the road. Yeah, they could give around tonight. All of Trevor's friend will be there to... <laughs> nice high swing from nice. Nico Baylor. And the Swiss now with four points, sliding into second place. Big bomb from off the net. And Nico's... I haven't seen him play a ton. He's really shown some impressive athleticism the last couple days. Took some huge swings yesterday with little to no approach and from pretty decent distance off the net and just delivered. Nice swing there from Eric Zahn. I believe this is the Americans' first time on the king side. Yep. Oh. Pablo will say that's going to be a short stay for you. See if the Spaniards can go on a little bit of run, of a run here. Oh. Not if Samoylov's in the way. Oh, <laughs> he's in the way twice. Still 12 minutes remaining, so plenty of time. But you start to get a little bit nervous, right? You start to feel a little bit stressed. Yeah, if you still have zero on the board, you want to get over to the, to the king side. Oh, Boylov's on fire blocking the ball. Not a big blocker by World Tour standards, but he certainly sees the game and reads the game very well. He has some good timing, and he has a pretty good jump. Again, the Spaniards trying to play spoiler to the Americans. But Marciniak and Zahn will get their first point, leaving just Herrera Gavira left on zero. I think they getting maybe a little bit nervous by now. But still, 11 minutes should be enough to get some points. Yeah, and we've seen from them time and time again the ability to go on long streaks of side outs. Yep, that's their specialty. Good little run here from the Americans. Marciniak and Zahn now on three. As 
we approach the halfway point here in round one. Touch on the block. <laughs> that was right. honest. Oh, little miscommunication there, but a good set. Oh, oh. nice tempo. <laughs> There's some of that athleticism we were talking about. Nico just elevating, delivering from the right side on the tempo bump set. Those Swiss guys, Swiss guys might have been a little bit of an underdog, but they're showing some skills here this weekend. Yeah, they won their group yesterday. Really have a, a good energy and good physicality all the way around on their team. Yes, for sure. Obviously, as we talk about that, they make the hitting error. <laughs> well, here's a chance for the Spaniards. Hey, there's number one. Yep. one four, the seal is broken. Some of the best court vision in the world, yeah. as we see right there again, Adrian Gavira. Just so smooth. Like we were talking about crab yesterday, I think. Herrera Gavira also have some of that. The calmness, the overview. Yeah, they never look rushed, do they? They just, they never seem like they're out of their game. Nope. Ooh, nice rainbow. Even when Nico's already standing right there, that shot is so good, he can't come up with it. Nope. I'll try Pablo. Oh, nice little knuckle pokey, but it's wide. It's out. Well, they get the four, and I, uh, that may be a tie for the longest streak because Marciniak and Zahn. They also got straight to four, right? Right. So that means Marciniak and Zahn hold the tie break since yep. they got their first. So the Spanish need a couple more points. Nice pick up, Nico. Oh, that's a swing. Nice swing there from Trevor Crabb off the block. They're at 15 points, comfortably into round two. Well in the lead here. 16 for the Nice crisp shot over the top, Trevor Crabb. That didn't make it. It's a big one for Marciniak Zahn as we have three teams on four. Let's dig from Plavins. Nice put away. Good footwork to get all the way there and be able to get up high on that ball, right? Yes, for sure. Oh. Big block from Parko Kratiger. Talked about it yesterday. This is a great angle that we get to watch this from because you can really see how far the guys press over the net. Yeah, this time it was really over. Oh, this time it wasn't. <laughs> Another chance for Pablo and Adrian. Oh, put right. away by the Spanish. He's That's about the most one. emotion you're ever gonna see out of the two of them, right? Just yeah. a little bit of a fist in the air. They don't express much. Alex told us they're like uh, Machina, right? Which is Spanish for machines. Oh. <laughs> Let's see if Pablo elevates here. Yeah. Nice hit on the block. One of the best jumpers around for a long, long time. I love his posture. I mean, nobody stands up straighter than Pablo Herrera. Yeah. And 
net fault there, Peter Marciniak, and of course that ball is dug behind him because every time a blocker net faults, the ball is dug. I know, you were talking about that yesterday. <laughs> it happens a lot. I was, my guess on the statistic is 125% balls are dug, <laughs> which seems impossible, but it's actually correct. Yep. <laughs> now Herrera Gavira on seven. Five minutes left on the clock. Yeah, so Marciniak and Zahn, and actually Baylor, Kratiger, and Samoylov Plavins have to start sweating it a little bit. Oi. And Plavins with another chance oh, and on two. There's a couple on twos there. Yeah. Critical defense there from Latvia as they are at the bottom with four. Looking to put a streak together here. There's the first one. There's one. The Lion King already slowly stalking the volleyball grounds here. Oh! Go ahead, nice try. Dig. Oh! <laughs> that was such a beauty. I mean, looky what I found just Trevor Crabb throwing up the beauty of a set. <laughs> That is a waste. That cut shot not exactly dialed in just yet for Trevor Crabb. Nope, he might have to work on that for the next round. <laughs> Herrera Gavira again looking to extend. Not quite comfortable yet, even though we only have less than four minutes remaining. They're only two points clear of two other teams. Baylor Kratiger, one of those teams. And Marco. Net touch? Oh. <laughs> what on earth was happening there? I think maybe he thought that was going over, right? So they were going up for the double block. I think so. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that. A guy bump set it high and then actually attack it himself. <laughs> Herrera Gavira sneaking away here. Yeah, they're going to be pretty comfortable now, I think, at 10 points. And now the battle becomes Baylor Kratiger and, of course, Samoylas Plavins, Mars, Siniak, and Zahn. Here's their chance. This is a big chance. They may not have another one. So they'll be looking to string a few together here. Oh, oh nice dig. Oh, he plays it. Yeah, that unfortunately went inside the antenna, so no good. Critical point there for the Americans. Nice try by Marco Kretiger. Again, I'm not sure if we discussed this yesterday. Jake Gibb has talked this over with the up refs and determine that the rule is if your thumb is extended on a knuckle pokey, that is not a good play. That's technically a lift, but for some reason, they seem to let that go time and time again. Zahn does that consistently. It's almost like a six shooter. Huh. I have to be honest that I didn't, I did not know that. But isn't it hard to see by the ref? Maybe. If you're like this, though, I mean, the thumb should be relatively easy to see. Theoretically, I mean, if it's lower than your knuckles, I mean, we're making all these uh, hand gestures like people can see it, but if it's lower than your knuckles, you're fine. But as soon as it goes out, that's when it comes into lift territory, I think. Right, right. Juliana was very good at that, I think. Showing the knuckle and then opening up the thumb just a little bit. True, yeah. Nice I shot there, that. Adrian Gavira. Right now. Well, right the, now, Samoylovs and Plavins are in danger. Yes. They're in the last place. With the final minute going on now. Smoothly up and over, yeah. New rule, of course. Implemented today that in the final 30 seconds, every miss serve will be a point for the team on the king side. And a shot for Pablo. This might be the last chance for Samoylovs Plavins. Serve down the middle. 
Oh, and touch. touched on the way out. More than likely, that'll be the end for Samoylovs and Plavins, unfortunately. Soft little shot. Oh, beauty. And as predicted, we saw Spain, the last team to get off of zero, but here they are tied for the lead. Yep. And a chance to actually go ahead here as time runs down. That'll hit the back of the line, and they will take the lead and start round two on the king's side. <laughs> so an impressive performance, especially late in that round by the Spanish team that were our inaugural kings in Utrecht, Netherlands. Yeah. So it's, another, it's another example of how quickly you can change in this game. Absolutely. Samoylovs and Plavins actually got off on a nice little roll early in that round, but ended up getting stuck on five. And that'll be the end of their tournament in Huntington Beach. Unfortunately for all of us fans who like to watch the Lion King roar. And They're a fun team to watch. But we'll see if we can't get a, a couple words from them in a moment from my favorite, my new favorite sideline reporter, Harley. Oh, Harley's the new one? <laughs> Doing a little tutorial with the crowd, teaching them all the hand movements for the royal block and the royal ace and the royal smash. Everything royal. We're sticking with the regal theme here, of course, king of the court. Oh, Royal Rally. I like that. That's a new one. Oh, that's a new one. I like it. <laughs> I like I like this view where you see the cameraman, the, the documentarian down there, Eric, just camera right in Pablo's grill. <laughs> oh, we got some juggles in the court here. A little extra time between rounds, it feels like, for the guys to recuperate. It's starting to get warm out there. Was it you and I yesterday discussing how you figure out that you're good at spinning cubes? Do you start with tiny little, you know, you spin your Legos as a kid or something and you move on to bigger and bigger things? Exactly. Start with the Ruby Cube, you said? Yeah. And then at what point do you add the shiny, sparkly pants? <laughs> <laughs> I think that comes last. That comes very, last? Very, very last, yeah. You dial in your spinning skills first, and then you go to wardrobe? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So we'll go down to the sand now with Melissa and our Latvian friends. Get their thoughts. Mel? There we go. I'm with the Latvians, a team that I didn't think that I would be seeing this early. What happened in the last two minutes? Did you think Spain was going to let you have that last point? No, we had uh, we had our chances, but didn't use it. And uh, last time we were on the other side, uh, we had like Martin had a good attack, but uh, Trevor uh, uh, Triborn and uh, Trevor they got like phenomenal defense and score close ball. So and then we just couldn't get in. So I think like timing and ticking and uh, it's like a little bit pressure and you know that you have to get in but it's like maybe you're not focused 100%. Yeah, yeah, that's the name of the game. Now your, your run is over here in Huntington. Is Huntington Beach still your favorite spot, Martin? Uh... I cannot yes, say... You, you can change your answer. No, What's your yesterday favorite? Yesterday he said his favorite is Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, still, but all the all four tournaments was great. So they were totally different. That's why I think uh, you cannot compare them because uh, there was city, this was beach, but uh, uh, for all tournaments, the common thing that atmosphere is great and it's most important. And uh, I'm, uh, I was so happy yesterday that there were Latvian fans uh, watching us here on live, and, and I'm uh, so thankful for uh, because they are coming every every year that we have tournament in California. They come and watch and support us. So big thanks to them. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. You guys put on a great show. I'm sad I won't be seeing you, but have fun the rest of the weekend. Thank you. Thank you. In Latvia.
right, so great look at the highlights from round one there. That round one by the Spaniards, Herrera Gavira with a late run. I think the longest stay still went to the Americans, the Hawaiians, Tri Born, Trevor so, yeah. Kraft. They put up 12, I believe. So we'll see if that number holds up for the extra bonus for them. Look at the weather real quick. The sun is shining here in Huntington Beach, California. It's 74 degrees, which in my opinion is about perfect beach volleyball weather. A little southwest wind at seven miles an hour, which isn't too bad, but it can get swirly in the stadium court. Back out on the sand here. Herrera Gavira off to a good start with the first point. It was about 11 minutes before they scored their first point in, the, in round one. They come right out of the gate on the Kings side, score two immediately. I think they decided they wanted a little different strategy maybe. Great dig from Nico Baylor. The cut shot attempt just into the net, however, from Marco Kreidinger. Big bomb. Ba -boom. <laughs> and a little fist pump from Gavira. Yeah, he's, he's fired up here on a Sunday. I think he's having fun. Trying to see if they can bookend this four stop series, this crown series, with two wins. They won in the Netherlands. They'd love to win here in Huntington Beach. I think there's also a prize for the overall king of all four tournaments. Oh, is that true? Something, I heard something like that, so. That'll, that'll be it an interesting, yeah. that'll be an interesting math equation. Yeah. Because we've had three different winners so far. We had Herrera Gavira in Holland. We had Pedro and Bruno in Antwerp, Belgium, and we had Gibb and Crab in Hawaii. Would we call this the volleyball version of Game of Thrones? Just to keep the, the regal theme? <laughs> oh, that's actually a nice similarity, yeah. yeah. I like it. And on the women's side, and feel free to not answer this if you don't want to. Who would be the Cersei Lannister? <laughs> oh, I don't want you to get in trouble answering that question. You can whisper it to me off the air. I'm thinking I'm going to be politi politically correct here and not answer that. <laughs> How about this question then? Which character do you think you would most closely resemble in Game of Thrones? Ooh. I mean, would you be a Lannister with your blonde hair? I would not be a Lannister. I'm not evil. Okay, but they're not, not all, all evil, evil, right? True. You have the oh. imp. Whoa, did what you see that? What a great play. Oh, great that's play on true. both sides, actually. Of course, we were busy with our Game of Thrones discussion. <laughs> Let me think about it. I'll get back to you. Okay. Oh, over on two. Board. Lots you of ways to kill a ball. Me. Yeah. Come on. We call that the Van Ersel. <laughs> yeah. And just like we saw in round one, the Hawaiians off to a good start. They got six points. They're level with the Spaniards. The other two teams, the Swiss, Baylor Kratiger, and the Americans, Marciniak and Zahn, still on zero. Swiss with a chance here, however. Nice dig there. And the finish. Okay, I think I know. I think I'd, I'd be Arya Stark. Arya Stark. Yes. Okay. She's kind of a good girl, but also a badass. She's certainly a badass, yeah. I'm kind of anxiously awaiting what she does this season. You know what I mean? Because she's kind of been on the outskirts, like learning all this crazy stuff, all the yep. magic and the no faces thing, whatever that's called. And yeah. uh, so she's got all these abilities and I'm waiting to see how she enacts that. Oh, nice deep corner roll. Just wide Trevor a little bit upset with himself after a great dig. It's almost the spike dig, right? Yeah. Nice swing cross court there from Baylor. And they're now on four points. Oh, 
Ooh, that's set a little bit tight. Oh, nice dig by Baylor. Oh, that's an overset. Oh, nice dig. This is a great rally. That's long. <laughs> the Swiss win it. Unbelievable. What? What happened? Net touch? I think Baylor just netted on that block. Oh, what a shame. Just some amazing plays. Both sides there. A sky high dig from Baylor and a one arm spear from Kratiger, not typically a defender. But the Americans get on the board. They needed that. Just a 16 minute round here. Just about at the 10 minute mark. About a third of the way through. Round two here. This is semifinal oh, A men's action, the A serve. Uh, Switzerland. We're discussing a little bit earlier with your countryman Alex Brower. Oh, okay. Interesting. You get it? I think that's the right call. Not interference, he's calling that a lift. Try kind of took that from behind his head and slam dunked it. Huh, okay. But you're allowed to redirect it as a blocker, right? But one-handed, you probably have to be a little bit more precise and a little bit more out front of your face, I would think. Gotcha, yeah. So going back to that ace serve by Switzerland that landed just on the line, we were discussing with Alex earlier in the morning, is one of the developments in strategy as teams start to play this format a little bit more going to be taking those easy serves? Because a miss serve just wastes time, right? Yeah. If you can play an easy serve, even if it's going to be a few inches out, I think you can for sure. try and side out and maybe get yourself some points. Yeah, I think that's going to be uh, definitely one of the strategi strategies. It's just such a switch in instincts because you're programmed for your whole life to let out serves go, right? And to try and make those determinations quickly. So sort of rewiring your brain is going to be difficult, initially at least. Yeah, especially if, like, if you keep playing both games, then it might influence also the normal game. Right, right. <laughs> and you don't want to do that when Olympic qualification points are on the line. No, 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 for sure. Nice little shot into the corner there from Pablo Herrera. And once again, they lead. Wheeler Kratiger, however, did a great job of climbing out of the basement. Nice set there. That's such a hard play for the right-handed blocker, Marco Kratiger. Beeler lays up a perfect ball, but he's got to, Marco's got to do some kind of contortionist act just to try and get some wood on it. Yeah, it's a difficult angle to finish. Yeah. Oh. That's unfortunate for the Americans. Big bomb right side, Adrian Gavira. Service error there that time. Nice shot there. Spanish are taking a run again. Yeah, they just get into those grooves, don't they? I think they're one of those teams that with every side out, they gain more confidence and it just makes it easier and easier for them. Yeah, and side out is such an enormous part of what makes them so good. Yep. They're just so consistent at that skill. Not the biggest team oh. in the world. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're blocking defenses, of course, good, but not having a, a sort of a true blocker on their team, they really rely on their side out game heavily to be as consistently competitive as they are. Yep. And they're showing their ability to be consistent in that skill here in this tournament. I, 
about, I'm batting about 800 for talking positively about a team and then having them immediately make a mistake. Yeah. <laughs> Agree. Unfortunately, I think we may have done that to you guys once or twice this morning. Huh. <laughs> Too bad. So apologies. I did apologize not only to you, but to the entire country of Holland for doing it. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow was, this morning was tough. It was tough competition. There are some good teams in the court. Nice little shot there. That's his preferred shot from the right side. I feel like we've seen him miss a couple of cut shot attempts, but he's really precise on that line and has a lot of variety as well. As does Try. I love to see Try play again. Yeah, absolutely. It's he had his whole born on the beach thing initially, and now he's got his back on the beach. Oh, nice marketing. Yeah self-promotion which we're all happy to see him back not only back but playing at a really high level yeah can't imagine the difficulty of i mean it's already difficult to play and then you know make the decision to retire stopping that life you're accustomed to is always hard but when it gets taken away from you yeah. against your will because of something that's entirely out of your control. I mean, that has to be just devastating and he's remained incredibly positive throughout the whole experience and it's nice to see him come through the other side of that and hopefully for his sure, health yeah. remains steady and, and consistently better. Yeah, I hope so for him. Ooh. What a pass there, Trevor Crabb. Big bomb, Adrian Gavira. I don't know if there's anyone better at that particular swing right there where he's kind of jumping backwards a little yeah. bit off the net and still just bombs it right up the middle. Yeah, it's a skill for sure. 15, 13, 7, and 2 with four minutes to go. So the Americans, Marciniak and Zahn, as we dip under four minutes here, in a little bit of trouble as they're going to need a trip to the king's side and a pretty good streak in order to overtake the third place Swiss team of Baylor Kratiger. I think they're looking for a couple more points just to feel a little bit more safe. Ooh, big swing. A swing right on the sideline. Herrera Gavira. And once again, they're running away with it. Never a thought of just blowing one to save energy for these guys. They're just, as we mentioned, machines out there. Yep. Side out machines. Our guy in front of us is just about to sit down at any moment so we can see the action. <laughs> sit down. Just so effortless, right? When yeah. they're on a roll. It looks like there's no way they're not gonna side out. Anytime you get into the twenties against teams this good and in the semifinals of this tournament, it's impressive. Yeah. Nice catch by John King, the up official. You might go after the record here. I, it's their own record, right? 26 or 27, something yeah. from yesterday? I think they want to break it. 26 is their record. They just eked out Summer and Sarah from Hawaii with that, and they are in good shape <laughs> to beat it here. He's just shooting right now. <laughs> <laughs> 25, chance to level their record here. Now they're welcoming missed serves at this point because they'd like a little breather. I think so, yeah. 
We'll have to double check, but I'm guessing. Oh! I don't know exactly where they started there, but did that beat the 12 point streak? That it's gotta be pretty close. Yeah, I think so too. That was a pretty long run they had there. Oh, nice cover. Oh, try. <laughs> I, I think, unfortunately, that's going to be curtains for the Americans because with just 40 seconds remaining, even if they get over, there's not enough time for them to get six points. But at least we'll have the drama. Yep. We'll get to we count it down. And that's, that's one, one point for them. <laughs> Adrian Gavira, not only a side-out machine, but a charitable human being as he hands them a free point. <laughs> That's four for them, right? So the service error came just before the 30-second mark. Oh, okay. All right, so they're not going to have enough time. I don't think so. <laughs> Unfortunately, Zahn kind of resigned to his fate there. And so we will see Herrera Gavira falling just short of their own record, finishing at 25 points. Another resounding victory in round two there, followed by Crabbe and Bourne with a solid 13-point effort. Baylor Kraniger making this, the final round here as well with seven points. We'll say goodbye to the Americans, Zahn and Marciniak. Nice showing getting all the way to the semifinals and the second round of Group A. For sure, they put up a good show. In just a second, we'll go down to Mel and see if we can't get a little insight from the Americans on their first experience with the King of the Court format and making it all the way to the semifinals. What do we think of Mel's sideline reporter gear? She's got the sarong and the sports bra. She looks amazing. That's pretty solid. It's way better than my baby medium t-shirt. <laughs> All right, Eric and Peter down on the sand with Mel. Mel? All right, boys, you had a push there at the end to make it through to the final round, but this is your first appearance here and you made it all the way to the semis. How are you feeling? Feeling pretty good. It's a good tournament. Uh, it sucks when they stall, so you have no chance of winning, but that's, uh, that's the game, so. That is the game. Now your run here is over, but what are your thoughts on the King of the Court Tour? Uh, uh, it was a great experience for me, especially. Uh, we got invited last second, so we're super happy to be here. Uh, we got lucky yesterday, you know, we made it to the uh, semifinals, and, you know, we just have to take advantage of it. So, uh, yeah, we're super happy. We are happy to have you here, boys. You put on a great show. Thank you so much, and enjoy yeah, the rest of your weekend. First tournament with uh, USA. He's got his assistant there, got USA on his back, so that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. him as an American. Well, we're happy to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for the good show, boys. Thank you. Thank you. Getting ready for round three of semifinal A men's action. So far, we've said goodbye to Samoylovs and Plavins from Latvia, and just most recently, Marciniak and Zahn from the United States. So remaining are Herrera Gavira from Spain, Baylor Kratiger from Switzerland, and the Americans from Hawaii, Trevor Crab, Tribe Born. Herrera Gavira resoundingly winning that round two. They just didn't get, make their own record. 
just fell short, but they may have just taken a little bit of time off there at the end. It's interesting to me in that post game, in that post round interview with Mel, Eric talked about not liking when people stall, mm -hmm. which we kind of hear that a lot that that people are frustrated with other teams employing some of those strategies to sort of not give other teams opportunities to score, which is fascinating to me. I understand that that feeling, of course, but the onus is really on you to True. determine your own fate, right? You can't rely on other teams to decide to help you out, right? That's no. sort of contrary to the competitive nature. I guess it's a, it's a little bit part of this game. Um, I think the organization is still trying to figure out what rules to implement. Like, today they added the 30-second rule in the end. Your thoughts on that? You like that? Um, yeah, I think it's... I think it's definitely good so that you don't get sky balls the wrong way or, you know, that you just get to play till the very end. At least it forces you to give that team on the king side a chance to side out. Yes, for sure. But, I mean, taking the maximum amount of time and, you know, doing these other things that are within the rules in order to not give teams opportunities to come back on you is... Oh, my goodness. Nice dig. Oh, Another big nice finish by Baylor. Big bomb from Nico Ooh. off the net and a great chase down from Marco Kreidiger. And we saw a lot of that yesterday out of this young Swiss team. I mean, they are physical. Make some exciting plays out there. They're on fire. Three Thanks. points early here. And again, the top two teams in this round are going to automatically advance to the final. And then the third team, since this is the first semifinal, we'll have to wait and see if their score holds up to the third place team from semifinal B. The number in the women's side was nine. Kelly Reeves and Brittany Howard put up a nine in semifinal group A the women's side, and that did hold up as I think your Dutch country mates only had five. And I'm curious if you talk to them later. They, they thought that there was a little bit of impropriety, <laughs> I think, on the part of the Americans, unfortunately. Uh, as the Americans had a chance to win it, and it would have moved Madeline and Sana through. Yeah. But then the, the uh, Canadians got to the Queen side. I don't want to. I don't want to ask Mel about what was going on there because I don't want to put her on the spot. We'll ask her the Game of Thrones question, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you know. that would be a good one. <laughs> uh, Tea she resembles too. That's that's a question for you to think about, Mel. Which Game of Thrones character? would you be? Not would you like to be, which most closely resembles you? I want to know your opinion. What's first? What do you think? Marlene was saying the mountain. <laughs> oh, me? Or? Okay, moving back to the All right, game. back to volleyball. <laughs> Enough of these Game of Thrones sidebars. No wines get a chance here to get their first point on, on the board. Adrian serves a ball that bounces into the DJ booth. It's an impressive bounce. <laughs> oh, nice. What a serve from Nico Baylor. He really is on fire. He was just waiting for round three to really dial it up a notch, apparently. Yep. Oh, right back at him. And right back at you this time for us. <laughs> Body on the line. I love seeing kind of the playfulness between competitors out there. That's one of the fun things about this format is obviously it's serious in that it's competition and everyone wants to win, but there is a bit of element of fun out there as well. Yeah. Nice vision again that time from Adrian Gavira. Just sees the early move to the line from Triborn and chops it into the corner. Baylor all over that one. Oh, oh big block, Adrian Gavira. Gavira kind of uncharacteristically fired up today. A little more demonstrative than we're used to seeing him. I like it, though. He could do it more often. Yeah, I like it as well. 
they do have a bit of a robotic nature, right? Oh. Typically, not in a bad way, but very little emotion. And True, so it's yeah. fun to see them enjoying themselves, celebrating a little bit. Once again, on a, just a smooth roll are the Spaniards. That one into the net, however, will give the Swiss a chance to add to their point total. Keep in mind, this is a 20-minute round here, but the first team to 15 points will win it. The Americans still looking to get on the board. If you're going to end up third in this round, then for sure you want to set some points. There's a good chance the score of zero would not hold up. I don't think so. That <laughs> will not get you into the final. And the Swiss take the lead with the big bomb cross court from Nico Baylor. Nice set there from Nico. That one just wide, though. And the Americans chance to get off zero here. See if they can duplicate the long run they had before in an earlier round. Nice cover, Triborn. Oh, Knuckle nice pokey set, set. Yeah. and the put away. Rewarded. Yeah, they really have a lot of craftiness to their game. Been playing together on the baby court at the Outrigger Canoe Club, which we all got to attend <laughs> just a week ago since they were kids. And there's point number two. Oh, heads up. Oh, heads up. That's Keep an eye out if you're all the way up in the VIP tent even. <laughs> I like when people come to sporting events involving balls and then get surprised and or upset when balls come flying into the crowd. Yep. It's part of the game. Just <laughs> yeah. you have to pay attention. Nice swing from Triborn. Getting his feet there and then going up off the hands of Pablo Herrera. Baylor's on that one. Oh, too bad, try. Try attempting to spike set it up to his partner just a little strong, but they do get off of zero at least and hang a three on the board. Tight ball. Oh, nice. What a get from Pablo Herrera. Oh, just wide. Now that was Gavira, excuse me. They do look alike sometimes, from a distance. There's a theory that just about every male looks the same at the beach with a hat and glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> Especially from distance. Yep. Actually seeing the Norwegians play for the first time with the, with the new hats on. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, boy. Oh. Something happened. I don't know if... Marco got a cramp, or if he got a little turf toe or something there. Oh, he looks Hopefully hurt. that's not serious. Maybe he jammed his toe a little bit. Yeah, unfortunately in this fast-paced format, that's one of the... We don't have time for medicals. Yeah. And he's visibly limping. Luckily they're on 10. So their score likely to hold up and give them a little bit of rest. But he's... Definitely hampered. Yep. Oh, hammering it. Try one. Oh boy. <laughs> That's not what he wanted to see. He would have liked the long rally to give himself a little extra time to collect. See if all his toes are in the right spot. <laughs> 
just halfway through this final round. The Swiss in the lead with 10 points. Herrera Gavir on seven and the Americans charging here. That's point number six. Interesting what you do strategically now as the Swiss. Do you just miss your serve? It's going to be tough, huh? It's still nine minutes on the clock. I don't know. The good news is that they've already hung 10 points up. So even if they were overtaken by both Crab and Bourne and Herrera Gavira, the likelihood of that score holding up as the third place team is pretty high, I think. Yeah. Oh. A swing there, Pablo Herrera in transition and a wonderful set from Adrian Gavira diving out to the sideline. Radiger with a little defense. Oh. He's a big boy. He can take up some territory back there. I think he's really injured there. If he's not going to the block anymore. I think he's avoiding to jump. He was reaching down at his toes, right? And maybe he jammed a toe or you get a little bit of turf toe sometimes if you step incorrectly in some of these holes. <clears throat> oh, good. Oh. Now they're on the king side. <laughs> <laughs> I know who because, deserves. <laughs> yeah, just what I wanted. Let's see. Let's see if Trevor serves the big fella. Of course he does. Huh? And oh, he gets he the makes point. It. <laughs> this is where all those games of uh, no jump that people play before practice comes in handy. Come in handy. Nice. And oh my goodness. They had to though. They had to do that and it was a really good pass from Marco Fradiger in fact. Impressive of them however to get to 11. Yeah. And if Herrera Kabira I mean if I'm the Swiss I'm just giving them these points right because yeah. you want Herrera Kabira to close this out. You're sitting in second with the automatic finals berth. And then the Americans have to sweat it out on seven. Yep. So the Americans are going to have two chances, essentially, to stop Spain here. Because the Swiss are basically going to give them those points. And that is into the corner. So that's point number 12. This should be point number 13 for Herrera Gavira. Yep. That's a pretty tough serve if you're trying to give away points. Uh, just catches That's, the back line. Uh, he gets that a lot. Just the touch of the line. Yeah. Try born Trevor Crab need a stop here. What a set. And just inside the back line again. And if I'm S Switzerland and I'm smart here, I just give this one away. Yep. Assure my spot in the final. And there it is. So the Swiss will automatically make it into the final and hopefully Marco yeah. Kratiger can get his health situated so that he can compete at full capacity in the final. I hope he's okay. Crab and Bourne are going to have to sweat it out. They have seven points. We'll see if that score holds up by the end of semifinal group B. Again, another convincing performance from the Spaniards. Las Maquinas. The machines. Herrera Gavira, which is a start to finish. Commanding performance here. Semi-final Group A. We'll see them later in the finals with the Swiss. Perhaps the Americans. We'll have to wait and see. The medical down there taking a look. And again, looks like Marco's grabbing that big toe. So it may be kind of a turf toe situation. It always feels like it's dislocated, like it needs to be yanked on to pull, be pulled back into place or something, right? Yeah. Let's see if uh, Mel can get some insight. Uh-oh, she's making a face. Ooh. I don't want to see a close-up of anything that's not in its proper alignment. What's wrong with it, Mel? <laughs> Mel, can you get the in-medical timeout interview? You get the play-by-play -play on what's happening with the big toe on the left foot of Marco Kratinger. Yeah, 26 points, that's great. 25 today, Spain. They are looking like top right now. 
King of Thorns, New Track, and we're going to do it again at Huntington Beach. Once again, we'll see if Mel decides to conduct this interview in Spanish or in English. Get a couple words from the winners of semifinal Group A, Herrera Gavira, or will we hear from the Swiss? Okay, it looks like we'll hear from the Swiss. See if we can get an insight into what happened to Big Marco. Mel? Marco, we're here and you just made it into the final round, but we have a little injury. Tell me what's going on. I don't know. I stepped on the line and I kind of it, I felt like it dislocated, but I'm not sure. And I can barely walk now, so I don't know what's going to happen now. We try to tape it and play, but yeah, I don't know. Well, we hope we can see you in the final round, even if we don't. Tell me about your experience here at King of the Court. Last week you didn't make it out, and here you made it all the way to the finals. Ah, uh, well, it's just unbelievable. So much fun to play here. Uh, the crowd is crazy. Is crazy. Um, yeah, we play good. We play better than in Hawaii. That makes it easier. But I think we just fight, uh, fought as hard as we could, and uh, in the end, it was a success. And uh, we hope we can make the final in. Three hours, I don't know, but uh, for sure first, uh, that's the, the big thing. Yeah, well, we hope we can see you in the finals. You guys have been so much fun to watch this week. Get well. I hope it's nothing too serious. Thank you. Let's see if we can get a look at what happened to the big fella here. Oh. Wow, the, the line did just grab him there. 